One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, hello, hello, internet world. This is Norma Jo. I even have some makeup because I'm kind of sick of doing these videos with no makeup on. That's supposed to be my fucking signature look. It's just such, you know, I'm just like, oh, fuck makeup. But fuck not having makeup. Anyway, so, my, uh, okay, I want to do a video on Zazie and the Metro. I tried to do two other fucking, or three, three other fucking videos. But because I was using my new-ish computer, it's not totally new, but it's new enough so that I, uh, hadn't made a video on it yet, you know? And I didn't realize that when I tried to make a video, the fucking sound would be off. Even though on the computer, I had the sound cranked all the way up. So I don't know what the fuck, I gotta go into the settings or some shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on with that computer. Every year technology gets worse and worse, man. I swear to God. Every day technology gets worse and worse. Nothing is straightforward anymore. Everything is out to get you. But anyway, so I'll just use my phone, you know, whatever. So anyway, this book, Zazie and the Metro. I was gonna try and do fucking you know, increments where, like, I talk about it little by little, but too late. I already finished it, and, uh, that shit was weird as fuck. <laughs> okay, so basically, I've been watching booktubers, which is nice. You know, I used to, I used to watch video gamers a lot. I still watch video gamers, but they're not as fun for me as they used to be. Nowadays, I mostly listen to movie reviews, a little bit of politics, you know, not enough to go crazy, but some politics, some social issues, you know, and shit, and that, that I've been getting into these booktubers. So, and my favorite booktuber is Gavin. Gavin reads it all. I will, I almost caught one of his live shows the other day, and I, and it was fucking fake. It didn't happen, and then the next morning, there was the real show, but I couldn't fucking join because I had to go drive. I had to fucking go drive three and a half hours or whatever. But one of these days I'll catch a live show and actually read along and all that. But anyways, so... All that inspired me to do my own book YouTube. The booktubers make it look so fun, you guys. If somebody out there, uh, somehow sees this video and doesn't know booktubers. I don't know if that's, like, a possibility, but they make it look so fun, man. And I haven't read a book for fun in, like, years and years, pretty much. But I used to have so much fun because in school, like, especially this one specific year of school, I'm pretty sure it was ninth grade, um, we had a reading, we had reading class it wasn't a full class all the classes are mostly like 50 minutes you know this was a half hour but it was nice because it was literally just like you get your book you sit you don't fucking do anything else you, you know it's not study hall study hall is like homework centric you know which is totally cool I mean I in middle school I also had study hall which was really super nice because chopping off time off your homework while you're still in the school day is like obviously is fucking nothing better than other than having no homework at all you know but, um, like, maybe I'll do fake freckles like how I did when I was in high school. That was fun. Um, anyways, so, so yeah, but I miss the, um, you know, I miss the, the reading time. It was nice just to have, like, designated time. Just be like, read for this long, and there you go. And before you know it, you've read through all these books, you know, and feels good. So, I wanted that experience again. So, um, oh, that looks more like cat whiskers. That's kind of cool. Maybe I will do cat whiskers. That'll be too many dots on my face, but whatever. Um, anyways, so I have a stack of about, uh, I want to say maybe six books that I have that I haven't read, you know, I'm not a real booktuber that has fucking shelves and shelves of shit that they may, may or may not have even read yet, but, um, 
I have about maybe six books or something like that. And it's gonna take me like literally like a fucking million years. Oh, look at my cat. It's gonna take me a million fucking years to get through them if I don't like have some kind of motivation. So yeah. But, um, so yeah, let's start with this book right here, Zazie and the Metro. What a fucking weird-ass book, man. What a fucking weird-ass book. Uh, okay, so basically what happens is that there's this girl, we don't know how old she is, but I think she's a preteen, because everybody calls her a little chick, and, you know, she seems pretty young, but there's one part in the story where she said she already started her period, so she's gotta be, like, at least 10 or something like that. Stop. Jesus Christ. Um, anyways, so basically, she is from some, some non-urban part of France, I guess, and her uncle, who they, who everyone keeps saying is super tall, they call him a colossus and a giant and all this shit, he's, like, supposed to watch her for the weekend, or, I don't know if it's a weekend, literally, but it's, like, you know, a couple days, it's, like, it says in the intro that it's 36 hours, which is two nights and three days, like one full day and night, and then, you know, parts of the other. So, anyways, so, um, now I don't want to touch these dots, because I feel like I'm going to smudge them. Um, but anyway, I should get myself a fucking mustache, that would be funny. Hey, baby. I want to get some fake beard hair, and look up, like, you know, a theater tutorial of how to put a fake beard on yourself and make it look decent, and then I can do, a, uh, I can do Ronnie DeFeo cosplay. That would be nice. Um, anyways, um, what was I saying? Right, she comes to stay with her uncle, and the whole book is, like, just chaos. Like, okay, it was written in 1959. I don't know if it's supposed to take place in 1959, but it's after World War II because everyone keeps talking about the occupation, and, like, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to take place closer to the end of World War Two because, like, everyone's, like, super kooked, but then I was talking to my mom, and it's like, okay, 14 years between 45 and 59, like, that's still, like, okay, people could still be kind of kooky, and the place could still be kind of in chaos, but, or it could just be these characters, you know, it's kind of hard to, um make any judgment, you know, but basically, for all these modern day people who are wrapped up in hella anxiety, because every little thing has to be perfect, okay, read this book, and you'll feel relaxed, because the constant chaos that goes on in this story, like, first of all, everyone on the street is rude, everyone just constantly, like, yells and bickers at each other, total strangers, total and complete strangers, there is no, like, personal space, there is no, like, not saying what you think. Like, everybody just busts out saying what they think at all times. Fights bust out at all times. Like, there, there's no, like, hoity-toity civility, okay? Fucking, like, our modern American, like, uptight wasps could not handle this shit. And it's funny because in the story, there's one character who they keep calling a bourgeois, a bourgeoisie or something like that, but she's right up in the fucking action with everybody else, so it's basically just a madhouse, like, it legit feels like this whole entire thing takes place in a goddamn, like, insane asylum, like, courtyard or something, not a modern-day insane asylum either, and not even a fucking one for the cuckoo's nest crazy house, I'm talking, like, a Victorian crazy house, like, a truly crazy nobody is in charge, and everything is just in a constant state of motion, fucking chaotic shit. So basically, she goes to stay with her uncle, I think it's nighttime. yeah, it's like the evening, and she's pissed off, and she's a little foul-mouthed little bitch, and she tells this weird story about how her mom killed her dad with a hatchet because he tried to rape her, but she's so, like, nonchalant about it, she's like, ha-ha, and yeah, and I've got the judge on my side and everything, and ha-ha, like, it's just like, what? And it, since everyone is so crazy and full of shit and just constantly talking shit, there's no way to tell if this is a real story or made-up story, like, it legit seems like she made the shit up but for all I know it could be real because nobody in the story ever says it's fake you know but that's kind of the nature of the whole entire story you don't know what's real and what's not and it's mostly dialogue like there's hardly any like descriptions or anything like that it's like written almost kind of like a play and everyone's just going back and forth constantly so yeah 
Um, anyways, she wants to ride on the metro. That's why it's called Zazzy in the metro. But spoilers, she never gets on the metro. Um, she she wants to get on it and she's pissed. So she's going around cussing everybody out. And then, like, basically her uncle is a... They say drag queen, but I don't know. I mean, I guess. Because he, he talks about how... He goes to, like, this nightclub, and or he works in a nightclub, and he dresses up, like, uh, you know, in dresses, and he's like, I got a Spanish girl outfit and a tutu, ballerina tutu, and he's like, but I guess being gay is illegal. Like, of course, everybody thinks, like, if you dress like a woman and you're a guy, like, you're automatically gay. You know, there's no, there's no nuance, like, nowadays, you know, this is the fucking, like, 50s, almost the six, it's 59, you know, so... There's no nuance when it comes to this shit, and I guess being gay is illegal because, or any kind of, you know, gender, like, nonconformity is illegal because they keep talking about how you're gonna get arrested for being a homosexual and <laughs> shit like that. And that's another thing is, like, there's so much shit that is written, like, phonetically in this book. Like, the very, very first, like, literal first word in the book is... How can you stink so, though? But it's all one word. Like, all one word, like, run together. Like, I wonder if I can put it up to the camera enough. Yeah, like this. And, like, that's all throughout. Like, and and the funny thing is, like, it's like a mix of, like, words like that. It's, like, phonetically written or words just, like, shoved together. Or words with, like, little pieces cut off, you know. And it's funny because I assume that this was written in French originally. But there's so many things that... I'm pretty sure, like, British slang. So it's funny, because I'm like, what was that in the original French? Like, must have been some slang phrase in French that, you know, translates roughly to a, a certain slang phrase in, in British English. Because there's shit in there, like, sling your hook and, like, I bet if I open it to random page, like, and the other thing is, like, okay, there's all that fucking informality. But then there's also, like, all this very, like, technical, like, overly technical language, or, like, um, like, like, there's this one part where people are, it's, like, describing, like, a restaurant where people are, like, drinking wine and stuff, and it's, like, they're moistening their flesh tubes, or something like that, you know, their ingestion flesh tubes, it's, like, technical-ass language like that, and then, like, um, what else? Like, just super, super flowery language in the same paragraph as, like, this, like, saw it off, you clot face. That's another thing. Everybody's constantly saying clot face all the time, like a blood clot. Like, I don't know. It's funny. And just cussing each other out. And, and, it, and they have no respect for the fact that this girl is, like, a, a kid. Like, everyone's calling her, like, a whore and a slut and shit like that. Like, especially the the landlord. The landlord of the apartment complex where her uncle lives. He just walks in and, he, and after seeing her for, for, like, a minute. Like, a literal minute. Like, I mean, yeah, she, she has, like, a foul mouth and shit. And she's always saying, like, bugger your arse and I hope everybody dies, you know, and shit like that. And he just walks in and he's just like, I don't want that little whore here. Or, like, some shit like that. <laughs> and everybody's telling her like don't walk around because they're gonna think you're a child prostitute like it's some seriously dark shit in this book but it's just said so comedically you know what I mean so this is what I'm saying it's like if you think your life is chaos like fucking read this book like you'll be like oh my life is nothing even like today like I sat down and read I read the last like third or fourth of it or something like that and then I went to go cook some eggs and usually when I cook eggs I'm very precise about like every time I even slightly might touch the raw egg, I, like, wash my hands and shit like that and keep it all separate. But this time I was just throwing shit around. I'm like, crack, crack on the side of the frying pan, like, throw it in here, touch this, touch that. Who gives a fuck, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> because this book is just so chaos, you know? It, it will, like, I don't know. I don't know if it'll have the same effect on you as it did me, but made me feel like, more chill or something, because it's just, like, this shit is fucking crazy, you know? Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna open it to a random page and see how fucking off the wall this dialogue is. <sighs> why, he was saying, why should, 
one not tolerate this life, since so little suffices to deprive one of it, so little brings it into being, so little brightens it, so little blights it, so little bears it away. Otherwise, who would tolerate the blows of fate and the humiliations of a successful career, the swindling of grocers, the prices of butchers, the m water of milkmen, the irritation of parents, the fury of teachers, the bawling of sergeant majors, the turpitude of the beats. The beats or the beat? See, and it's another thing. I don't know if some of this shit is um, typos, too. Um, the lamentations of the deadbeats, the silence of infinite space, the smell of cauliflower, the passivity of the wooden horses on a merry-go-round, were it not for his knowledge that the bad and proliferative behavior of certain minute cells, gesture, it says in parentheses, like, all throughout the book, it's like gesture in parentheses. Or the tra trajectory of a bullet traced by an involuntary, irresponsible, anonymous individual might unexpectedly come and cause all, th all these cares to evaporate into the blue of the heavens. I, who now address you, have many times... This is Gabriel talking to Uncle. And he's just talking to a bunch of random tourists. Like, okay, so back to the story. Like, um... Like, so she comes on the first day. He doesn't want to... He, he's like, I gotta go to work, you know, at night, in the nightclub. And then he's, like, worried, because he's, like... And he's got this wife who is, like, every single thing she does is described as gently. It's, like, a fucking joke. It's, like, she said gently. She said gently. She put down the glass gently. Like, you know what I mean? It's like that. Like, it's, like, a big fucking joke. And then... So, Zazie goes to bed... And then he's saying, like, oh, shit, like, and she's gonna wake me up in the morning, and it's, like, he's just, like, my dad, like, he's, like, I gotta sleep until noon, otherwise, I'll, like, I'll be fucked, you know, he's, like, I need my sleep and shit like that, because he's fucking nocturnal. And then the, the, he's talking about he's gonna drug her, or, like, he's gonna put a suppository in her ass or something that'll make her sleep for, like, 14 hours or something, but he, I, he doesn't do any of that shit. And then, like, the next morning she gets up, and she's, like, sneaking around and stuff. And then, like, I guess the apartment, like, on the bottom floor is, like, a, um, a bar. And then, so all the characters, like, the bar, the bartender, there's, like, this lady that works in the bar down there, and they're, they have, like, a parrot. And then the parrot always says, like, talk, talk, that's all you can say, or something. Which is funny, because the parrot always says that, but at the very, very, very end, the parrot's owner like, actually says that to the parrot, so I was like, oh, that's where you got it from, but yeah, and then, what else, so anyways, as he gets out, and she starts walking around, and she's, like, she walks to the metro, but then she sees it's really close, so she's all pissed, and then, like, this weird dude, who they said has a big-ass mustache, sunglasses, an umbrella, and something else, giant shoes, I think is what she said, he comes up and starts talking to her, and she's, and she's all like, oh, he's a cop, and then he, like, takes her to the market and starts, like, buying her shit. He, like, because the previous day, they went to this um, cafe, and she wanted uh, some drink, which I didn't understand, but then it, it turned, I looked it up. It turned out it was Coca-Cola, but just spelled wrong. It's spelled, like, Cacacalo. So I, th for some reason, I assumed that was, like, chocolate soda. I don't know why, <laughs> but apparently it's Coca-Cola. So, um... So, anyway, this dude starts talking to her. She thinks he's a cop. And then he, like, buys her some shit. God, why is this phone making me look so fat under here? What the fuck is that? I need a little stand to put my phone on. Because I can't just be like this the whole time. Um, or I need to put... I'll put a, like, scarf around my head. Oh, shit. Let me do that. I'm gonna put a scarf around my head like fucking Jacob Marley. That'll be funny. I'll make a big ass bow. Look, look at this shit. Holy, holy shit. I don't even know if that looks like a bow. My hair is like caught up in it. Oh my God. Actually, this makes it look so much worse than it was, but I'm gonna leave that on. That looks funny. I look like some fucking animal from Alice in Wonderland or something.
Let's pull some hair out. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, what the fuck was I talking about? Okay, so, she's going around, this dude buys her Coke, and then he buys her a fucking pair of blue, she's like, oh my god, do they have blue jeans here? And then in the back of her mind, she's thinking like, oh, is he a pedophile? Like, he wants to fuck me or something. But then she's also like, oh no, he's a cop. Like, she's going back and forth with these things. And then... <laughs> This is so fucking ridiculous. Um, but anyways, so then he like gets the blue jeans, but he's like holding it hostage from her. And then he takes her back home and then he's like, because the whole, like her uncle and her, all her uncle's little friends from the, from the, you know, it's kind of like one of those like wholesome sitcoms where it's like they're friends with all the neat, like the uncle's friends are like, yeah, the bartender that lives below, and the lady that works there, and then the landlord is even in it, and then there's, like, his his brother-in-law, who is, like, a taxi driver, and then, but it's, like, Uber or Lyft, because he uses his own raggedy-ass car, and then, um, like, there was another character, too, there's a cobbler, and the, it's confusing, because they make it seem like the cobbler works in the same, like, works in the bar, makes it seem like they're both I mean maybe they're just side by side underneath the apartment complex I don't know I don't know there, there's no like explanation of layout it's just like this happens this happens this happens you know it's like a play but um anyways so <laughs> I love this so anyways the dude takes her home the guy with the big ass mustache he takes her home and meanwhile like the adults have been looking for her, but then they give up they're looking for her. They're like, oh, no, she's going to be mistaken for a child prostitute. And someone's going to, like, kidnap her and, like, rape her and all this shit. But then they're like, oh, fuck it. Like, oh, because I forgot. I forgot. When she was first leaving the house. Um, oh, wait. It's 21 minutes. 